Yep. Okay, Josh Steffler with Freedom Free For All Television, your community access television show. I'm joined by Elizabeth May, Green Party leader. Uh, we were just at a nonpartisan open town hall, jam packed, and we're just going to get a couple questions with uh, Ms. May. Yeah. Um, first question a lot of people are very concerned about the Enbridge pipeline coming through British Columbia. And on the internet and in some of these meetings, we hear rumblings of violence and sabotage towards the plans. And we definitely encourage peaceful resistance. If you could talk to these people that are planning sabotage and violence, what kind of message would you give to them to tell them not to do it? Well, first of all, I, I hope no one is actually doing that. I mean, you, you never know if things are on the internet if they've been placed there by people who've been employed by the fossil fuel industry mm -hmm. to delegitimize what is right now a widespread movement in British Columbia. It's not marginal. We know that the Federation of British Columbia Municipalities, the British Columbia government, uh, all the First Nations along the route, and most British Columbians do not want pipelines across northern BC. They're two-way twin pipeline with toxic diluent moving from Kitimat to Alberta because why do we have to move toxic diluent from Kitimat to Alberta? Because they're trying to ship out a product that's so raw that it won't flow unless you mix it yeah. with another fossil fuel product and then comes back Alberta to Kitimat and then tankers. So the whole scheme is not in Canada's interest economically, it's not in our interest environmentally. So what would be the reason for anyone to talk about violence? From the, I have to be very clear, I'm never in favor of anything other than nonviolent. If it's not legal, it's nonviolent civil disobedience. So if you have if you're in a movement or an organization where you hear anyone talking about doing anything violent, I think it's important to take a photo of the person talking about violence because that person is probably a saboteur working to delegitimize and criminalize your activities, marginalize your activities, and make the entire group at risk of arrest for conspiracy to commit illegal acts. Do not, for any reason, imagine that it will be effective, useful, or anything other than counterproductive and dangerous to do anything that borders or is, in fact, violent. Don't even talk about it. If someone's talking about it, and I remember this was advice from a lawyer named Clayton Ruby years ago, we were organizing before the uh, Quebec Summit of the Americas. And he said the yeah, same thing. If someone starts talking about violence in your group, say, I think you're an uh, undercover agent provocateur with the RCMP. We don't want you in the room. Go. Thank you. Uh, next question. A lot of our viewers are concerned about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Um, and we're concerned, there's so many different things and so much of it is secret. What would be the most effective or best way to resist the TPP? Because I personally feel that it undermines our national sovereignty yeah. and puts our, our lawmaking and our, essentially our sovereignty into the hands of non-elected uh, global governance organizations like the World Trade Organization and the International Monetary Fund. Well, essentially all trade agreements are about a reduction of national sovereignty in exchange for uh, a, a closer economic partnership. The difference, I would say, all except for one, the European Union. The European Union did an interesting thing as a trade deal because it created an elected parliament for the new trade bloc. Right? We don't talk about it very much, but the European Parliament, why does the European Parliament exist? Because they wanted an open trade zone, they wanted a common market, and they wanted to reduce tariff barriers, and, and that arrangement, by the way, included that the strongest environmental laws in Europe had to be adopted by every country in Europe. So instead of what happened with NAFTA, where it was a ratchet downward on environmental protections, the European Union trade deal was organized in a way that promoted higher standards. So not every trade deal is a bad trade deal. You can construct a trade deal that's fair and that has higher environmental standards. Uh, the TPPA is not one of them. So the Green Parties of New Zealand and Australia and Canada and all around that whole block, we're all fighting it. One of the things it will do, it will make it uh, harder for us to protect agriculture in Canada, make it harder for us to deal with higher pharmaceutical drug prices. We haven't seen the text of the agreement yet. So the most effective thing for people to do is to uh, demand the text, make it a democratic process that involves the citizens of all the countries involved in the Trans-Pacific Partnership as proposed. Uh, we just put out a press release because we discovered through a leak that ended up in the New York Times 
that uh, the U.S., of all countries, is actually trying to promote some environmental safeguards in the TPPA, and Canada is opposing them. So we need to get more trade literacy out among Canadians, and by the way, the agreement that worries me much more than the TPPA is still the Canada-China Investment Treaty. Canada has not yet ratified it. That would give the People's Republic of China the ability to sue us if they didn't like our domestic laws. That one worries me a lot, and I hope that we can continue to raise awareness about that so it doesn't get ratified. Perfect. Um, a lot of our uh, a lot of our viewers are also concerned about Agenda 21, United Nations Agenda 21, and how mm -hmm. it relates to our sovereignty. Um, it feels many people suggest that it is a way to undermine our national sovereignty and put the United Nations in control by playing on our fears for the environment to do what's good for the common good. Yeah. while reducing our civil liberties and our... Yeah. yeah, you know, Josh, this is where I've agreed with you on everything you set up to know. Yeah. Agenda 21 is frozen in time in 1992, and there is no movement to implement it anymore. What it was in 1992 was part of what was called the Rio Bargain. Yeah, we had binding treaties executed in Rio for protection of biodiversity, otherwise we'd call it nature, yeah. and for climate action. And these were binding treaties that were signed by Canada and basically every other country on Earth signed on to these treaties in Rio de Janeiro mm -hmm. at the, the Earth Rio Summit. Summit. And one of the reasons that it was in a conference on environment and development, I was there, I worked on it for the two years that, of the negotiations leading up to it. Agenda 21 was an agenda for the 21st century. It was about poverty alleviation. It was an agenda that wasn't binding. It was about domestic actions by many countries. We weren't two weeks outside of Rio before the rich countries that were supposed to donate the money to make Agenda 21 happen, which was never binding or big government coming down. It was bottom up. That's why it never happened. The rich countries walked away from their obligations to assist the poor. And uh, we've been suffering for it ever since, frankly. So it, I know Agenda 21 has picked up a certain currency on the internet as a threat. Number one, no one in the UN talks about it anymore. Okay. It's more than 20 years old, and it's basically uh, a, a historical artifact. Okay. So it's not going anywhere. And I personally think that's a shame. I'll say that even if I think people are worried about it. Yeah, I, it's not going anywhere. It's 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 um, it's a, it's it's no longer relevant. In 2014, it was negotiated in 1992, and it's okay. it's uh, it's over. Uh, final question, I guess, uh, with the war on terror and how destructive it is on our environment, destructive it is on our economy, destructive yeah. it is on our civil liberties, and. Um, with respect to experts in their field, uh, have you heard of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth? Yeah. There are over 2,000 architects and engineers pushing for a new investigation, an independent okay. investigation yeah. into 9-11 because something doesn't add up. These architects are saying that it wasn't um, the pancake theory, that the government might be lying. Well. So, Would you support a new, in, new independent investigation with subpoena powers to support these architects and engineers to get the, the truth of 9-11 out there? Because 9-11 truth will end these 9-11 wars. Number one, I don't think that if it were other than the official story, it would end the concern about terror, because terrorism is occurring in new places and happens and is a threat. So the question is, how do you deal with terrorism? You can't declare war on a noun. No. A war on terror doesn't make any sense. These are criminals. These are criminal activities and should be dealt with by the kind of investigations, investigative powers, arrests, fair trials, all the things you do for criminal activity. In terms of the 9-11 issue itself, as the leader of the Green Party of Canada, an event that happened in the U.S., I think that's up to the U.S. I can tell you right now, the Green Party in the U.S. agrees with the so call the for, yeah, they call yeah. for an inquiry. I just don't think, given the priorities that we've got in this country, that it's my issue. Okay. But, uh, you know, there are certainly, there are a lot of lingering questions. Mm -hmm. uh, one last one. Were you aware that there was a third tower that fell on 9-11, World Trade Center 7? There was yep. no plane that hit it, and it... 
Yeah, and the story, there's two different stories. One is it caught fire, one is the story that it was prepared to be demolished. I'm not going to go there because I don't know. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people who believe that there were, uh, that there were a lot of things that were uh, other than the official story. Yeah. And I'm not going to tell you that I would have any trouble imagining that the U.S. government doesn't always give us the official, the, the truth in the yeah. official story. I mean, I'm old enough to remember that the whole war in North Vietnam, the war on North Vietnam began over something called the Gulf of Tonkin incident, which yes. it took decades awesome. to find out never happened. But I have a very hard time imagining that anyone would deliberately have killed all those people on their own territory domestically. Perfect. Doesn't mean I don't think there are questions. Yeah. And and those are, I think, for the U.S. government to handle. Okay. Well, this is Josh Steffler with Freedom Free For All Television. You can find us online, freedomfreeforall.com. We are changevictoria.org. And I'd like to thank Elizabeth May for coming in. Do you want to give a shout-out to your website? Oh, yeah. If anyone wants to check what's going on with the Green Party of Canada, they can go to greenparty.ca. And if you want to check out in a nonpartisan sense what I'm doing on Parliament Hill, the website is Elizabeth May.